when we can make our futures anew on November 6th, he reminds us all, yes, we can. Ladies and gentlemen,
the consequences of any of us staying home really are profound. Because America's at a crossroads. The health care of millions of people are on the ballot. Making sure working families get a fair shake is on the ballot. But maybe most of all, the character of our country is on the ballot. And the good news is, 
Eventually, we made the right choice as a couple. Didn't happen as fast as it should have. But eventually, we chose our better history, our better selves. But it didn't happen because everybody sat back and wait, waited for them. John Lewis didn't sit back and say, man, I hope someday things get better. It happened because some people marched. Some people mobilized. Some people organized. And when they won the right to vote, people voted to make a better history. That is how things happened. We, that's how we abolished slavery. That's how we overcame depression. That's how we won women's rights and workers' rights and civil rights, LGBT rights, immigrants' rights. That's how we broadened. That's how we broadened the constitutional mandate to all people. That's what made it the story of America a story of prophets. As Frederick Douglass told us, power concedes nothing without fight. Progress never comes without a contest of ideas and a contest of determination. And for every two steps of progressive change that we make, we've usually had a step back in conservative retrenchment. Every time we pull ourselves closer to that founding idea that all of us are created equal, endowed by our creator with certain unalienable rights. Whenever we try to make that real, the status quo is pushed back. You win the right to form a union, You can count on some people trying to bust you. You win a higher minimum wage. Congress won't raise the minimum wage to 10 years. So it's worth less. You win the right to vote. Folks are still trying to take it away. Trying to do it in Georgia right now, right here, in 2018. Making this country live up to its creed has never been easy. Ten years ago, I was campaigning for president. And we had, we had been living through one of those periods of conservative retrenchment. Republicans had been cutting taxes for the rich, just like they're doing now. Cutting rules for big banks and polluters. We got hit by the worst financial crisis in our lifetimes because of those policies. And Democrats had to come and clean it up. So, you know, I, I rolled up my sleeves. I said, all right. I got a broom, I got a mop. We got the economy growing again. By the way, it hasn't stopped growing since. So, so when folks when, when, when the Republicans start talking now about how, oh, look how great the economy is. Where did you think that started? Where did it start that? They, they, they start talking about how, how, oh, look at all the jobs we created. We created more jobs in my last 21 months than they created in their first 21 months, what are they talking about? So, we 
covered another 20 million folks with health care. We doubled the clean energy we generated. We put tougher rules on banks and credit card companies. We cut our deficits by more than half, partly by making sure the wealthiest just pay their fair share. That's all. That's all. And by the time I left office, wages were rising, the uninsured rate was falling, the economy was growing. Handed it off, I said, here. That's what we did with a progressive agenda. reverse 40 years of economic trends in only eight years. So we didn't reverse all the growing inequality that had taken place or all the jobs that had gone overseas. We had more work to do, especially once the Republicans took over Congress and blocked everything we did. But they said, no, 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 give us a chance. We know what to do. So what have they done? They've now been in control of Washington for two years. What have they done with that power? It's not true. They have done something. They cut taxes for the rich, just like the last time. They stripped out rules to protect our air and our water, just like the last time. Ran up the deficits, just like the last time. And they know this stuff is not popular. So they try to scare you with all kinds of boogeymen. Try to scare you with divisive issues that they can make up. They'll try to disenfranchise people and take away their right to vote. Safety's opponent has already been caught multiple times.
Nobody was afraid. If we have God on our side. That, 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 that realized he had to fight. A nonviolent fight. For justice and equality. Here. He received an education that helped forge the intellect, the soul force, the discipline, the compassion that would transform America and taught others to be at a friend. So Georgia, be at a friend. If their efforts to take away your right to vote makes you mad, there's only one way to make it right. Don't boo. So 
talk about health care for a second. Eight years ago, the Democrats passed the Affordable Care Act. The law helped cover 581,000 folks just right here in Georgia. The law also made it illegal for the first time for insurers to discriminate against people with pre-existing conditions. It also, by the way, and I want all the women who are listening, on TV, wherever you are, on the internet, it used to be insurance companies could charge you more just for being a woman. It's just like going to the dry cleaners. You know where, like, I put in my shirt and they'll charge you one, and then you put in your bus, they're going to charge you twice as much. So we said, no, you can't do that. Democrats made that happen. And Georgia, not a single, I want everybody to be quiet because I want you to hear this. Not a single Republican voted for it. Not one. Zero. Not a. Zilch. You said. None. Not one. So they then proceed for the next eight years. They're obsessed. We're going to sabotage Obamacare. We're going to repeal Obamacare. And obviously, if they keep control of Congress, you know they're going to try it again because that's what they do. Except something interesting happens. Suddenly, even the folks who didn't like Obamacare, they kind of liked not being discriminated against because of the pre existing convention. Some of the folks who didn't like or vote for me suddenly said, you know, I kind of like having health care. So now it's election season. And suddenly, magically, Republicans are out there running ads saying we are going to protect you and you've got a pre existing condition. these protections for pre-existing conditions. Last year, they fell just one vote short. And if they win on Tuesday, you know they're going to go after it and they'll succeed next time. If they keep control of Congress, you better believe they're coming after your health care again. But a Democratic Congress would not let that happen, and that's why you got to vote for Democrats are telling them to vote. covered here in Georgia. One survey shows that the majority of Georgians of every age, every gender, every race want the next governor to expand Medicaid. Even a majority of the public. Stacey's opponent says he won't do it. Stacey has promised and will do it. She will expand Medicaid coverage. So if you vote for her, and you vote for Democratic state legislators to help her, yeah, yeah. more vote to cover nearly half a million Georgians, just like that. Dem Democrats aren't going to let Republicans go out your pre-existing conditions, protections, or gut your Medicare to pay for their tax cuts. They'll protect your care. And you know it because they've done it. Now, but, it, but I want to make a larger point, George. If, if Republicans thought the tax cuts for billionaires was popular, that's what they campaigned on, but suddenly you don't hear a peep of 
about that. If they thought all their votes to take away your health care coverage were popular, that's what they campaigned for. You don't hear people about that. But it's worse than that. Not only will they not own up to what they have done, suddenly they are saying that they're the ones who protect people with pre-existing conditions. They, I want everybody to pay attention to this. They have literally been doing the opposite of what they're now saying. It's like calling up that. Call them black, white. It requires some kind of gumption, some, some kind of nerve, some kind of hooks. We can also call it what it is. It's a lot. And, and part of what they do is the, the, 
mysteries they tell are specifically geared to terrify folks. And what's interesting is after the election, they don't talk about it no more. I guess it just gets fixed. You never hear about it again. Remember in 2010, they said that Obamacare was setting up death panels to kill your grandma. Now, no way. I mean, I, I got to admit, I, at the time, I didn't know where to start. What do you mean? 2014. They say the ball is coming to At, right after the election Sunday, they didn't talk about the Ebola no more. 2016, Hillary's emails, this is terrible. This is like violating American national security. You know they didn't really believe it. Because if they did, they'd be concerned about our current president on his cell phone. Well, the Chinese are listening to it. And he's leaving the phone. In his golf cart. I didn't even have a phone for eight years. I, when I finally got out and I had this phone, I said, Sasha, I do I work this? <laughs> didn't know what to do. Now in 2018, suddenly they are telling you that the biggest threat to America. The biggest threat is some impoverished refugees a thousand miles away. On foot, got their babies with them. Broke, got no money. This is tech. Oh! And you know what? That's not enough just to lie about it. Now, they're sending our brave troops, who, by the way, by law, cannot enforce laws on domestic soil. They're sending them down there for political suffering. When they can be with their families, the men and women of our military deserve better than that. That's not patriotism. So they try these scare tactics, but here's the thing, Georgia. What I worry about is sometimes we fall for this. It's like some of you too young. I guess maybe they still show Charlie Brown's Christmas. Y'all know. Love that show. Da -da 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 -da. So you know how Lucy's got the football? And, and, and she says, come on, Charlie, kick it. He says, no, you're going to pull away. No, no, not this time. And then finally he goes, she pulls it. He's flat on back. Sometimes I feel like we're, we're like Charlie, but we just fall for the okie doke. George, don't fall for the okie doke this time. Don't be bamboozled this time. Don't be hurt away. Because while they are trying to distract you with all this stuff, they're robbing you from them. They'll say, look, look, look over there. Then they'll give the tax cuts to the billionaire friends. Look, look. And then they'll let the big polluters poison our air and our water. They will take your health care away while you're not looking. They are like one of those times where a door-to-door -door salesman comes to your door, says he's going to sell your security system, and meanwhile his buddy's in the back stealing your stuff. <laughs> but, but more than the practical effect, when words stop meaning anything, when people can just make stuff up and there's no consequence, democracy can't work. You 
for what's right regardless of party line. Leaders will fight for you and for what's best in the American spirit. Patriots who will actually stand up for anyone whose fundamental rights are being threatened. stands up for other people's health care, even if they've got health care. I want a leader who will stand up for other kids, kids being bullied, even if their kids are okay. I want a leader who will stand up for somebody else's right to worship as they please, even if I disagree how they worship. Because this is America. This isn't some half-baked, you know, backwater. This is America. Land of the free. Home of the brave. And that's what all of us need to stand up for with clarity and with patriotism and with purpose. Those core values that bind us to our fellow citizens, no matter who we are. Because that's what Americans are supposed to do. That's what America is supposed to do. And that's what Stacey Abrams means. Politics and 
until stuff happened. And now they're saying this time is different. This moment is too important to sit out. The antidote to government by a powerful few is government by the organized, energized people. And let me say this, and I want all the young people who are listening, because I was reading some articles about some young people saying, well, I'm woke, but I'm not sure I'm going to vote. Make things better here in Georgia. 